detrimental to your salvation. It's time for us to be blessed. It's time for us to look unto the hills from which cometh our help, because our help cometh from the Lord. All right, we're going to look into the word today. Uh, I'm looking at in the book of Psalms 100 because we have to learn how to magnify his name. We thank, thank the Lord for the men in the house. You know, um, it's something about men learning how to praise the Lord. Now, David was a warrior and he knew how to praise the Lord. He knew how to seek his face. He knew how to pray. He knew how to put God first. Many times he would have things that would come up in his life that caused a hindrance. You all know what he did when he looked out on the balcony and he, and he seen Bathsheba out there. Well, the Bible says that he repented of that. And the Lord restored him. So now we as a people have to learn how to praise the name of the Lord, especially men. Can we get an amen by somebody? Amen. Let the men say amen. amen. Hallelujah. A little bit louder, please. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. We got to get the praise on the inside, the brothers. Hallelujah. When men praise the Lord, you know what it does? It changed your whole house. It changed the children. It changed the wife. Your wife get more, amen, excited about what's going on in your life when you put the Lord first. So we're going to look in the, the book of Psalms, chapter number 100. And we're going to just focus on what it means to praise the Lord. Psalms 100 and verse 1 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. So in other words, everybody that's in the land need to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, I don't know how you praise him. I don't know what you do to praise his name. I don't know whether you wait, raise your hand. I don't know if you shout. I don't know if you stomp your feet or clap your hands. I don't know what you do to praise him. But whatever you do to praise him, we got to get into the mode of praising his name. Can I get a witness? When you're making a joyful noise, that means a sound has to come from you. There's a sound of praise. There's a sound of worship. There's a sound of repentance. Lamentation is the sound of repentance. But we want the sound of praise to ring through the sanctuary. Come on, give them praise, somebody. Oh, come on, get in the spirit of prayer. I know you may be tired, but you got to get that spirit real done. Come on, give them glory. This body cannot handle the Holy Ghost when it's really come down on you like it it desires to, your body can't handle it. Come on, give him praise. That's why you see people run and jump and, you know, do all kind of things because the Holy Ghost come with fire. Come on, give him praise, somebody. You got to have the Holy Ghost down on the inside, moving at the time. Hallelujah. Necessary. So the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. I need somebody to make some noise today. Come on, make some noise real quick. Make some noise. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise, all ye lands. Then it tells you to serve the Lord with gladness. Don't come into his place sad. But come into his place glad. David said, I was what? Glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So when we come in, we ought to come in glad. Come in with an uplifted spirit. Come in ready to magnify his name. Come in ready to challenge the enemy that will try to keep you from praising him. Where y'all at? I wish I had some help today. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. 
Y'all were singing today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, give them praise. Uh, don't let that die down, but keep that song of praise going on in your life. Keep it in your heart. You know, we used to sing those old-time songs look like they have more substance than the new cute little song. When you go back and get some of those songs that captivated your soul, captivated your spirit. Sometimes they brought tears to your eyes when they were sung in the right spirit. So we're going to serve him with gladness and come before his presence with singing. And this is the part that I like. It says, and know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that made us and not we ourselves. What does that mean, my people? That means that you owe him. You owe him for having the health and strength in your body. Have you ever been to the hospital? You seen where people were sick and they needed someone to assist them. To be able to function, to be able to stay alive. You know, sometimes you can't stay alive unless you have somebody assisting you when you are sick. But here we find that he has enabled us. We can get up and feed ourselves. Come on, give him praise. You can comb your hair if you got some. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. I don't hear nobody. Uh, you, you can take care of your hygiene. Oh, I wish I had some help. Sometimes we take those things for granted. But many people sometimes reach that place where they can't take care of themselves. So we have to know that uh, the Lord, he is God, and it is he that made us and not we ourselves. Then it turns on and say, we are his people. I want you to know today that this is a, a Black History Month. I don't know why they chose the, sm the smartest, smallest month to give to us with the less days. Come on, give them praise. But we'll take it. Come on, give them glory. This is Black History Month. And I want you to know we were talking to the ministers uh, this morning, and we were telling them that the entire Bible is our history book. A lot of times we don't know that because... We have been taught away. And many of the uh, identities of the people have been changed. They changed it with the movies. You know, when you look at many of the movies, uh, if you look at uh, the Ten Commandments, Charlton Heston was a white man, but Moses wasn't a Gentile. Come on, give him praise. If you look at the movie Samson, he was a Gentile. But according to the Bible, he was not a Gentile. So they wrote out all of our uh, history out of the Bible and taught us against it. But now in the last days, it's coming out who we are. Coming out that we are the prominent people, the ones that are written in this Bible. The entire Bible is full of our people. I wish I had some help today. And we are to find encouragement. And when you talk about these things many times, people have a tendency to say, oh, you're getting racial. No, no, no. The people that changed our identity, they are the ones that got racial. The ones that took us out of the Bible and put all these other uh, pictures in there. When I was a child, you know, we used to thumb through the Bible and look at all the pictures. Because we didn't know how to read. So we looked at the pictures, and everybody in there was on the contrary part. I didn't see not a one melanated person in the Bible. Come on, give them praise. And sometimes they even uh, uh, painted Simon the Cyrenian. He was a Caucasian. Now, this is not taking anything from, from our Caucasian brethren. But we don't want to take anything from ourselves. If he chose us to be his people, then we ought to stand up to the plate and be the people he have called us to be. The Bible says, know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that made us and not we ourselves. And we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. 
The Bible tells us my sheep, they know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. When you begin to embark upon your identity, it brings a certain kind of substance into your life. It helps you to get your dignity back. Come on, give them praise, somebody. It helps you to, to feel like you're somebody once again. I remember as a young man, I would go into public places, and uh, whether you know it or not, I was born in the Jim Crow era. You know, the Jim Crow era didn't change until the mid-60s when they implemented the civil rights. Come on, give them praise. So I remember going in places as a little child and seeing signs that said, color, seeing signs that said white, all of that has to do with our heritage. The Lord told us, if you would not keep my commandments, if you would not uh, be the people that I have chosen you to be and called you to be, I'm going to cause curses to fall upon you, and you're going to be like a byword. What is that? He's going to call you all kind of names. You know, we got all kind of names. We, we've been African American. We've been Negro. We've been colored. We've been the, the triggers, you know, the word that rhyme with triggers. Come on, give them praise. We've been all of that. that were, those were bywords that he told us that we would be. But now we are awakening. Now we realize that the Bible was all about us. That we were written in the scripture. Now that doesn't take away from anybody else, but it helps us to stand up to the plate and regain our dignity and to find out that no wonder we can praise him like we do. No wonder uh, the things that we do are more outstanding because he put a substance in us that was to change the world. He told the apostles to go ye into all the world and teach the gospel to every nation. When you see that word nation, what does that mean? It means every nationality. We were to take it to every nationality and teach it. But when it fell from our hands, it became contaminated. It became corrupt. And uh, they began to infuse all other uh, paganism into the faith. And that's why we have what we have today. But now... In this latter day, we are being called back to our origin, called back to our original position. You are the chosen people of the Most High. He has placed something down on the inside of you that is to be resurrected. He has given you your dignity back. The world is not going to look at you in the same light. I wish I had some help. Even now, they're starting to look at you differently. When you go into a public place, they give you a second take because there's something on you. And he put it there, and it cannot be removed. And it really shines out when you exemplify what you were put here for. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah. And we're going to finish in the book of Isaiah chapter number, I believe, 60 or 61. And then we're going to take it on home and bring our point out to you so that you will know what we were called to do. Isaiah chapter number 60 and verse number one, it says, Arise, shine, for the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. What is telling us today that we have to arise now. It's time for us to arise now. Time for us to put foolishness down. Time for us to get rid of those things that have held us back for so long. It's time for us to rise up as a people. Shine out as a people. Uh, because the Bible says, the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. This is what's happening now, brothers and sisters. Darkness is covering the earth. You see it on every side. You see signs of the time. You see that famines, 
fabricated famines. They are doing things that cause famine. I wish I had some help. <clears throat> They're doing things uh, to make you pay more money at the grocery store. The famine is being fabricated. But after they finish fabricating the famine, then the, the Lord is going to come in and he's going to finish the task. When he put his topping on it, it's going to be a real famine. The fabricated famine, the people that are fabricating it, they got all of the resources somewhere in a, a secret place where they can eat like they want it. They got, amen, the cattle and the chickens and all the food, amen, reserved, and they're giving us the scraps. But that's why we got to rise and shine because of the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. It says, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Isn't it covering the earth? That's all you see now. Trouble on every side. Then it says, gross darkness, the people. So people are looking for a light. And we as the people, we have the light. The darker the night, the brighter the light. If you're in a dark room or in a dark cave, if you just strike a match, Look like that whole cave lights up. So the darker that it gets in the earth, we've got to shine forth. We got to bring forth. Men got to be men that are utilized by the Spirit. Come on, give him praise, somebody. Men got to begin to call upon the Most High for your families. Men got to cover their wives, cover their children, cover their offspring in prayer. When you rise up, then the spirit of the Lord gets energized in the household. Listen to what he said. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. So he's rising upon us. This is why we're praying, amen, in advance before the trouble gets there. You know, many times uh, people have a tendency to become lackadaisical in their prayer life. Have you ever experienced that? You're not getting up praying like you used to and sometime long and I, I wish back for the days when, when the Holy Ghost was real thick and we was anointed. Well, it's time for us to get back into your prayer room. It's time for us to start calling back on him because what's getting ready to be released in the earth you're going to have to be praying. Come on, give him praise. You're no match for the demons that are being loose today. You're no match for the atomic weaponry that they're going to be loosened today. You're no match for the tanks and, amen, the SWAT team vehicles. But your prayers, hallelujah. Your prayer contain all kind of power, all kind of resources. Your prayer can cause the person at the hymn to not push the button. I wish I had some praise. Listen to what it says. And uh, the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Right now, the glory is being shed upon us, whether we know it or not. Sometime when you've been in your prayer room, uh, uh, the anointing has rested upon you and you don't even know the effect that you're having upon people. When, when you just step in the room, uh, uh, people begin to look at you and look at you again because the glory of the Lord, amen, is upon you. You'll be something like when Moses went up on Mount Sinai and when he was up there visiting and receiving the Ten Commandments, the, the glory of the Lord was upon him. And when he came down from off the mountain, his face was shining so bright that the people couldn't hardly stand to look at him. This is where we have to go at this time. We got to spend time with him where uh, uh, the glory of the Lord would be upon thee. It says, for behold, darkness shall cover the earth Gross darkness to people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. There it is again. Uh, we talked about that uh, the apostles were given the commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. 
Well, this portion of the gospel that we're preaching today haven't been preached, so, so we still have that task. The Bible said when this gospel is preached in all the world, then the end will come. Well, evidently, it haven't been preached in all the world because the end has not came totally yet. So we have to carry this message until the end come. Come on, give him praise. It says, and Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. So in other words, we are in the midst of a rising. And you don't want to miss this time. You don't want to miss this opportunity when the Lord begin to rise you up. Hallelujah. When he begin to raise up his people, raise them up in prayer, raise them up, amen, in worship, raise them up in prayer so that the world will know those are the Lord's people. Come on, give him praise. Then the Bible says, lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together, they come unto thee. So people, once we get ourselves together, the people are going to come to us. I see some things that are happening even now among our people. People are beginning to get hungry. As the food begins to get out of reach, they're getting hungry for the word of God. Come on, give them praise. And I want you to know you got the right appetite. If you're hungering and thirsting, the Bible says, Blessed are ye that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Come on, give them praise, somebody. Where y'all at? Hallelujah. I, I feel like, amen, moving forward, but, but y'all ain't with me yet. Come on, give them praise. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. So as we begin to position ourselves, as we begin to pray, uh, the, the Lord is going to put a gravitational pull upon our lives. Your friends are not going to view you the same way. Your associates are going to begin to look at you in a higher formality. Come on, give him praise. Why? Because the glory of the Lord is going to be upon your life. This old way of living is playing out. Come on, give him praise, somebody. It's time for men and women to become more spiritual minded and to become more conscientious that this time, this day, this world is changing right before our eyes. I look over the internet and I see all the, the, the Gentiles and the folk with the money. They're more worried and, and got all kind of, you know, the end is near, you know, get ready and all. They, they're preaching more than we are. You turn on the channel and we doing, we dancing. And you look at them, they trying to warn you about the time is coming. You look at us, and the women, they showing off their shape. They're keeping us preoccupied. Come on, give God praise. Keeping us distracted. But they're worrying about trying to keep their money. They're worrying about the banks are, are crashing. Banks collapse. Financial collapse. You look on our channel. We somewhere cracking jokes. Come on, give them praise. What we got to do, we got to awaken to what's going on in this world. Get out in the yard and, and, and plant you some food in the yard. Come on, give them praise. I don't know where you all are. You know, sometimes we are uh, complacent because we got uh, good income coming in and we can go to the grocery store and buy food but what if you got all the men got all the money but when you go to the store ain't nothing on the shelf I need some help today see we don't think about these things until the time is up on us then all of a sudden oh what are we going to do I went to the store and the shelves was empty well if you got a little something growing in the yard where y'all at Hey Amen. You get you a pit bull and put it out there so the cause folk gonna be looking over the fence. Looking over the fence, trying to come and get get what you growing. Come on, give them praise. Hallelujah. Y'all may not believe me. If okay, if you don't think it's coming, just put this message on the shelf. And then when it began to knock on the door, go up there and get that message off the shelf. But in the meantime, trying to do you some kind of 
productivity. Uh, Sister Coleman, she she out there in the in the yard planting stuff. And this is you know what? It's really exciting to see how you can take one seed and put it in the ground, and then it'll produce a fruit, and the fruit is full of more seeds. He's showing you his productivity. Now, those of us that are left here in this world, we are like the fragment of seeds. We are the remnant of the people because a lot of our people have been killed, slain, and have fallen already, but we are the remnant. He's going to take that remnant of people and raise up a nation. The Bible said a nation shall be born in a day. Hallelujah. I wish I had some help. Y'all looking at me like... like a nation is going to be born in a day. These words that we're speaking to you, a lot of this is not going to be received in the other churches until it's too late, until we're getting ready to get out of here. In, in the Gentile church, they've hidden this from us. A lot of this information is recorded, but it was hidden and stolen from us. Now the Lord is, is, is saying, rise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Behold, darkness is going to cover the earth. Gross darkness to people. But I'm going to allow my light to shine upon you. You're going to be the people that will lead the folks out. You're going to be the people that have been rejected for so long. You're going to be the people that the world is going to say, Oh, they are the people of the Most High. When they once, amen, uh, painted ugly pictures of us. Amen. Barefoot, eating watermelon. Hallelujah. Sitting with, with our little pants all the way up. High water pants. Come on, give God praise. Drawing us with big pink lips. Amen. Uh, but they're going to have to take it back and say, these are the people that we made fun of. These are the people that hold the way up out of here. I wish I had some help. Hallelujah. These are the people that we've done wrong. I'm sorry. That have the way of eternal life. These are the people that the Spirit of the Lord is resting upon. Come on, give him praise, somebody. So we got to put ourselves in position. That's why we're getting up in the morning and saying, Lord, will you wake up your people? That's why we're getting up in the morning praying for our children and our grandchildren. Saying, Lord, we need you to stretch forth your hand before it's everlasting too late. We need you to awaken our young men. Take them out of the drug houses. I wish I had some help. Oh, Lord, we need you to shower your blessings down on your people. Take the drugs out of their hand. Don't let them OD off the fitting on. But Father, we need your help today. Look at what the Bible says. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all oh, they gather themselves together. They come to thee. People are going to start coming to us. People are going to start coming to his house. Y'all get ready. Y'all get in position. Because as things begin to get worse and worse, people are going to start waking up and coming in to hear what they need to hear to be saved. I wish I had some help here. When we first started this message, people had a rejecting spirit. They didn't want to hear it. They thought, oh, no, no, no. But now, as the gross darkness, amen, begins to, to be broad in the land, they're beginning to see that light in the midst of the darkness. I wish I had some help here. Uh, then the Bible says in verse 5, then thou shalt see and flow together. See, now is the time for us to flow together. No time for us to be against one another. You know, for so long, we was like crabs in the bucket. Come on, give them praise. One trying to get out, and by the time he get to the end of the bucket, they pull him right back down. 
But the Bible says that uh, and thou shalt see and flow together. And thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. My heart is enlarged today, people. My heart is going out for my people. I, I have, amen, a cry for my people. I, I'm, I'm crying out, Lord, save our men. That's who I'm praying for first. Save our men, Father, because if the men get saved, y'all hear me? If the men get saved, the women going to come automatically. Come on, give them praise, somebody. And once the men surrender their life, blessings come along with them. Oh, glory. Come on, give them praise. The thing you've been struggling and trying to get, once you surrender to his perfect will, the door going to swing open. And here come the blessings. Blessings on the left. Blessings on the right. Blessings on the top. Blessings on the bottom. Every time you turn around, he's blessing you. You, you turn to the right, to the left. Front to back, blessings. Come on, give him praise. I'm so glad that, that I'm a blessed person today. I said I'm blessed today. If you speak it, he's obligated to do it. Is anybody blessed in here today? Come on, give him a blessed praise. Come on, lift your voice and say, Lord, I want to thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you for my blessing. Lord, thank you for food on my table. Oh, Lord, thank you for an automobile to ride around in. You didn't come to church on no 10 speed. Come on, give God praise. But you pulled up, amen, in your own personal vehicle. You ought to give him some praise. You ought to praise him from where your blessings come from. If he bless you, you ought to say, thank you, Father. Thank you for my blessing today. Thank you for letting me see a brand new day that I haven't seen before. I have seen too many of us get taken out, but Lord, you left me here. So I'm going to praise your name. I'm going to magnify your name. I'm going to glorify your name. Listen what it say. Then, when, when we come together, then, when we begin to acknowledge, when we begin to pray, then, when the, when the earth gets full of darkness, when all the stars start closing, then, then thou shalt see. Then thou shalt flow together. Then thine heart shall fear. A lot of times, men didn't fear the Lord. They walked about and did what they want to do. But he's going to get our attention. Did you hear what I said? He's got a way to get your attention. You know, the, they had a saying, they told the women the closest way to a man's heart is to his belly. <laughs> well, the Lord figured out the closest way to get to your soul is to your belly. When, when you ain't got no food to eat, come on, give God praise. <laughs> If he begin to mess with the food and, and ain't no food on the table, you say, oh, you fall down on your knees. Oh, Lord, I ain't got no beans and ain't no greens. Come on, give God praise. I ain't got no cornbread. Come on, give God praise. The closest way to get to your soul when you ain't got no food to eat, you'll learn how to pray. Come on, give him praise, somebody. So, so he's going to get to us. Then we'll be able to see. Then we'll be able to flow together. Then our hearts shall begin to fear and be enlarged. You know, I'm so glad that, that we got a, a, a father that's concerned about us. When things begin to get slack, he's going to open up doors for you. If you're calling on him, if you his child, if you got children in your house, and you got food in the house, and, and, and it's scary, and ain't, ain't no food outside, but you got food in the house, ain't none on the shelves in the store, and you got food in the house, you ain't going to allow your children to starve. Well, what do you think about our father? He's going to make a way out of no way. I wish I had some help up in here. The whole world will be starving, but he's going to make a way out of no way. You're going to eat something. He's going to make a way for you to eat. Come on, give him praise. Oh, hallelujah. See, 
See, what we have to realize is that uh, uh, we're not banking on how much money we got because a lot of us ain't got that much anyway. So you can't bank upon your money. Come on, give him praise. Your money is a resource, but he is our source. God is my refuge. God is my strength. God is my present help in trouble. So that's who I'm depending on. You might, you might have, amen, uh, $100,000 sitting over to the side. But, amen, if a loaf of bread costs $50,000, that's half of your money. I wish I had some help, somebody. We're going to need him. And we're preparing for that time today. We're going before him. We're praying. Y'all need to come with us in the morning as we go before him, as we lift up our voice, as we call upon him, as we pray. We're praying for your homes. We're praying for your family. We're praying for your children. We're praying for your grandchildren. We're praying for nieces. We're praying for nephews. We're praying for the covering of the Lord to cover us as these days become more dark. We need your help right now. Somebody ought to give him praise. It's going to become unpopular to live in sin because it's going to cost too much to participate in sin. Let me move on because, amen, the, the time is growing short. Listen to what it says. Verse 6 says, the multitude of camels shall cover thee. Uh, camels were a sign of prosperity. During a time of famine, when uh, Joseph was down in G Egypt, he had a dream. You all know the story. He had a dream that seven cows came up out and presented themselves. They were fat and robust, you know. And then some thin cows came up. Seven thin cows came that were famished. And they ate up the fat cows. Come on, give God praise. The thin cows ate the fat cows. And they stayed skinny. Come on, give God praise. So what, is, what does that mean? He interpreted the dream that uh, he told the king those fat cows represent plenty. You know, we just, we're coming out of the plenty right now. You know, they, they had uh, plenty of money. They were giving free money away to everybody to lower the interest rate, you know, where money was plentiful. But now, what do you see? They're raising the interest rates again. Money is not as plentiful like it used to be. Come on, give God praise. What are you saying, Pastor? We're going into in, in famished times now. Food prices are high. Over in the UK, a dozen eggs cost $10. Now, you know that's crazy. $10 for a dozen of eggs when they used to cost 59 cents. I remember back in the day, they used to cost 59 cents for a dozen of eggs. Can I get a witness? So what's happening? Our money is losing its value. We're going into the famished days. What time do you have to be wasting time in a time like this? We need to be sober. We need to be vigilant because the adversary is getting himself together to take folks out. I wish I had some help up in here. Trying to, trying to get us ready because our time is now. He's getting ready to get us, get us together. We, we got to get our mindset together. He's going to take care of us. He's going to lead us out of this country. He's going to take us to the land of promise. I don't know how long it's going to be, and I don't know when it's going to happen. That's why I'm praying and in his faith, saying, Lord, when the time comes, I want to be right here in your face. And if I'm right there in your face, you're going to tell me what to do. But if I'm not praying, if I'm not fasting, if I'm, I'm not seeking his face, I'm going to miss it. Come on, give God praise. So this is why we're praying. This message should be for the young people that's got children. You know, my heart goes out for 
the little children. But you know what? I put them in the hands of the Lord because he know what to do better than I know. Come on, give him praise. That's why it's time for us to get in his face because darkness is covering this land. Look at what else it says. Verse number 7 says, Thou shalt see and flow together. I love that. And thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be covered, converted unto thee. So in other words, men are going to get saved, especially by the young men that take heed to this message. See, we got to download this message into the younger generation. We didn't have some good, good years. So a lot of us older people, like, like us baby boomers, we got any baby boomers in the house? Hallelujah. That's all. We got any baby boomers? Some of y'all don't even know you baby boomers. <laughs> baby boomers is everybody in their 60s or, or late 50s and, and, and on, on up. The folks retired right now, baby boomers. I said on last week that the pyramid is going to turn upside down. You know, a pyramid go like this. Down here on the bottom is all the people that are working. And the people on the top are drawing Social Security, pensions, and different things like that. But now all the baby boomers were so many that the pyramid is turned upside down. And the drawing folks on the top and just a few people down on the bottom. Come on, give God praise. So how in the world is these little few people going to finance all of us baby boomers on the top? So what do they do? They devise a scheme to try to take y'all out. You know? They're trying to take you out. <laughs> Any kind of way that they can, they over-medicate you. They do all kind of things. You go to the doctor and you don't go home. If you're a certain age, that they put a check mark by your name. The more of us they get out the way, the less money they got to spend. Come on, give God praise. See, so you got you to gotta let the, the Lord speak to your mind. This is how they think. This is how the, the devil is thinking, how to get rid of you. So they ain't got to spend. If we get rid of them, we ain't got to finance all these people up at the top. Somewhere along the line, things are going to crash. But those of us that are awakened, those of us that, that are listening and waiting for the Lord to speak to us, we're going to be protected. I don't hear nobody. I believe that he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he it's my refuge. I'm not depending on, you know, I, I, I thank the Lord for a little pension check or Social Security. I thank the Lord for that. That's, that's a, a, a resource. But my source is in him. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. The little food I got stored up, that, that's a resource. But if that run out, my source is in him. I wish I had some help. He'll do you like he did the children of Israel. When they escaped, what did he do? He rained down manna from heaven. Food coming out the sky. Hallelujah. When Elijah preached and told him, ain't no rain coming for three and a half years. Notwithstanding, you, you down here in the midst of it too. But the Lord Send him meat and bread twice a day by a ravenous bird. Come on, give God praise. So however you take care of me, uh, here I am, Lord. I'm your child. How, if you send a bird with his rusty feet and drop my food on the ground, I'm picking it up and eating it. Come on, give God praise. However you bless me. See, people don't realize that this Bible it's not the book that many people have painted it out to be like it's some little kind little book that's sweet all the way through. 
Oh, the Lord is so good. He's so merciful. He loves us so much that he won't let nothing bad happen to us, no matter how you live. I don't care what kind of lifestyle you live. He's so gracious. He's not going to allow anything bad. But when I read in the Bible, it don't say that. It tells us that all liars to have that part, where about? In the lake, to do what? To burn with fire and brimstone. You mean that loving God you've been talking about? Gonna throw some folks in a lake of fire? I thought he was loving. I thought he was so kind. Yes, to those that are lying their lives. Yes, to those that are in prayer. Yes, to those that have said yes to his will. But if you're on the opposite side, penalties coming to you. Come on, give him praise. That's why I tell the young folks, y'all, this ball is in y'all court now. And then Sister Cassandra, she just all of a sudden, boom, she gone. She was there Sunday. And then Sunday night or Monday morning, we get in the car. She gone. So, young folk, you need to wake up. Don't let death come and get you and you unprepared. At least have a hope. Come on, give him praise. I'm talking to y'all now. This, I may not be shouting or up in the high gear, but I'm saying a whole lot right now. Keep your prayer life so that your family would, would be protected. It's no uh, worse feeling than looking your children looking up at you hungry and you can't do nothing about it. Well, my children looking up to me hungry. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm looking up to him. <laughs> Lord, you see, you see us down here, and the Lord will say, yeah, here it come, here it come. I'm blessing you. Come on, give him praise. That's the kind of God we serve. He ain't going to let you starve. If you're serving him, if you love him, he's going to take care of you. Some of you all are blessed more now than you ever been. Some of y'all got more money you don't know what to do with right now. Come on, give him praise. Well, don't stop paying your tithes because he's blessing you. Now. You done got stingy on the Lord. Come on, give him praise. The more he give you, the less you want to give him. He'll snatch it back from you. Come on, give him praise. you snatch it back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all don't like to hear that, but that's how he is. So if he's taking care of me, I'm going to take care of his business. You take care of God's business, he'll take care of yours. Because we're going to need them in a minute. We need them right now. So, the Bible says, rise and shine. Because your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Come on, give him praise. The Bible tells you that the glory of the Lord is upon you. So let it shine. The Bible says, let your light shine. So that men will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So brethren, I'm appealing unto you. Get close to him. Get close to him. Start praying. I don't care if it's just a little bitty prayer. That's all right. Pray that prayer. I don't care if you got to go back and remember the prayers we was taught when we was children. Now, I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to That's better than no prayer at all. <laughs> Come on, give God praise. Pray that one then until you get something better. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yeah, yeah, you will learn how to do something. At least you seek in his face. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. Learn how to do something. If you don't know about heart, turn to the Bible and read it. Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. Come on, give him praise. At least you're praying. You got to start somewhere. Don't go down here every day and don't ever pray. Holler. I don't care how cool you are. You know, the, I'm too cool to pray. He'll break a cool man down. 
I, 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 I'd rather be a man in heaven. You might be a cool cat on earth, but you're going to be a hot dog in hell. <laughs> Come on, give God praise. You learn how to pray. Learn how to give him glory. Learn how to magnify and lift up his name. I don't care, amen, you a man? Yeah, I'm a man too. But I, I am so big and bad, I can't pray. I need him. Do you hear me? You need him. We used to sing that song. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Yeah. Every hour, I need thee. You need him whether you know it or not. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I Whether you know it or not, yeah. every hour I, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Sometimes you might not feel like it, but I come. Sometimes you might be sleepy in the morning, but I come to, to thee. Let the church say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Let me say, let the church say yes. Ah, yes. Say yes. Woo. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Somebody ought to give him some glory up in here. You know, that's how you get the spirit to move. You got to do things that reach down to your soul. You got to call him out of the depths of your soul. Yeah, I need thee. Oh, can y'all help me say, I need thee. Come on, help me say that. Hey, every hour, I, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I Sometimes you don't feel like coming, but we get up anyway. I come. Sometimes the enemy try to stop you, but you gotta make your way. I come to thee, to to thee. Let the church say yes. Yeah. Let the church say yes, say yes, say yes. Come on, give them praise, somebody. 
Your soul need a blessing right now. Your soul need a blessing. Sometimes you got to find a way to pour your heart out to it. Too many things pressing up on you on every side, so you got to pull your heart out. Lord, I need you. I need you. I don't care what, what I look like. I don't care who's looking at me. I need you. Come on, give him praise. Rise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. It's time for you to be counted. He's calling you to step forward. Step forward for your families. Step forward for your wives. Step forward for your children. Hallelujah. Give them praise. That's all I have today. Amen. Amen. I feel a worship. I feel a praise going on. See, that, that, that's what helped you to get into the spirit of praise. You surrender your heart to him when you just just uh, just give yourself over to him in praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He's gonna bless you.